And then in the 21st century, probably, you know, occasioned by the emergence of fundamentalist and violent Islam, mm. there was this massive, sudden, real hostility to religion in the public square. We're talking about the new atheists. They're friends of mine, my old friend Hitch, God bless him. Uh, and uh, he would hate me saying that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I don't care. And Sam yeah, Harris, my yeah. friend Sam, and, and then Richard Dawkins, the most unpleasant person, <laughs> at least from a distance one could imagine. But nonetheless, the energy was with atheists, mm, right? Mm. So, so and, and yet that does seem to have petered out to some extent. What, what do you think killed new atheism, at least what, what killed its, its momentum? I, I think a few things. I, I think, firstly, it started to take on an almost quasi-religious aspect to it. it. Some of the proponents of it began to look quite dogmatic, you know, and, and arguably those, those four people you mentioned, the so-called four horsemen of the new atheism, started to act almost, in people's minds at least, as the, as the sort of high priests of this, this new, new atheist cult. They were the sacred texts, these best-selling anti-God books they'd all written, and they had, you know, these gatherings to worship the awe and majesty of science. And, and it, above all, though, I think it was the fact they had a materialist creed, a sort of orthodoxy, that if you went against, you would be cast out. And certain of their friends were rounded upon, you know, when the atheist philosopher Thomas Nagel published a book called Mind and Cosmos, just simply asking, well, maybe there's some kind of purpose in the universe. Not, not God, but, you know, some kind of purpose. He absolutely got rounded upon by... So they, it felt like there was this quite zealous nature to, to some of it. And, and I think people started to tire a little bit of the kind of fundamentalist aspect almost of, of new atheism itself. So, so, so new atheism couldn't escape religion, <laughs> is what you were yeah, saying. Absolutely. Really. The, the impulse to have meaning overwhelmed the desire for there to be no meaning. I, I think so. Uh, in the I just think that it, it's very difficult to actually squash religion out of people. And, and I think the new atheists thought they could do that. I think there was almost a naive optimism that we could have a sort of future purely ruled by reason and science alone. But the fact is, and, and this is the, the second aspect of what I think killed new atheism, people kind of need more than just a negative to live by. So just saying God doesn't exist isn't enough for people. And the problem was that once they'd all agreed that God didn't exist and religion was bad for you, people then started to try to suggest ways in which life could be lived better under this atheist banner. But the problem was they couldn't then agree on, on what that should look like. And so you had a big split in the new atheism between those who were advocating for atheism plus, which was this sort of atheism plus a commitment to the social justice movements, you know, gender, feminism, LGBT rights and so on. And those who went in the other direction, said, this is ridiculous. We, we don't want any, you know, political ideologies messing up our common sense oasis of reason. And, and so, you know, the folk who went off in the atheism plus direction started having battles with, you know, the, the Richard Dawkins who kind of went in the opposite direction. And that really was what meant the whole movement started to unravel internally because the, the battles they ended up having internally were far worse than any of the stuff they chucked at, at Christians. 